Nobody really knows how to pronounce this word here. Wait. Here. My friend called it Vardal once. We... We don't talk to him anymore. Not... not after that. Well, no, not... not because of that. It's just... It... it was the last straw. Today, you and I are going to look through Vitrol. Or, as I like to call it, a performance answer I can legally talk about on YouTube, unlike the last time. Now, when we go to their website, Vitrol CC, Malwarebytes browser guard absolutely spasms out. But this is no need for concern. It's simply false flagged, as many optimization utilities are. Even open source ones run into this problem too. So keeping that in mind, there's nothing to really be concerned about when you're on this website. The thing that does kind of ache me though is having to sign up with either Google or Discord, even just to use their free utility, which we are looking at today. I feel that many others would agree this is pretty well to set up. And I could see one of two things for going down this route. And two, not wanting to have a database made for keeping usernames and passwords, and then being in charge of password resets, giving out forgotten usernames, and so on and so forth. Generally speaking, it's safe. It tells you the sort of things that do get shared when you connect with, let's say Google for example. Just my profile info is shared, which is listed as name, email, and profile picture. Once we're actually loaded into the program, ignore the name, I'm on an alt from when I was a kid. We'll move immediately into tweaks where there are recommended tweaks which are considered safe for everyone on any system. Advanced tweaks which are good for you, but maybe less safe if you don't know what you're doing. And then discretionary tweaks which can be chalked up to personal preference. There are no advanced tweaks here in the free version, just a list of recommended ones mostly. Kind of like that self-help article that told me to wake up at 5 a.m. I, I did once, and then I just sat there in the dark. And then there was that other time, the last time I followed a recommendation actually, I, I shaved my head and bought a standing desk. And I... I truly can only say that I regret one of those, but you would never guess which one. There are some useful tips in here like disabling background apps and telemetry, along with background maintenance, which can help with some CPU usage, better memory management settings, along with plenty of other miscellaneous optimizations like disabling power saving states that are geared towards helping performance. The only one that I really have an issue with, and it's not even like a true issue per se, but like with adjusting the mouse and keyboard data queue sizes, just recently, I changed my stance on this completely, and I'll have an article on my website if you want to read up more on that. I would like to think it's an interesting read, but I also do computer stuff for a side gig, so like, I don't know, just give it a read. Moving past that though, and onto power plans, I just chose their standard desktop plan, which disables a lot of power saving states along with turning off core parking. Afterwards, we have an app boost that aims to disable core zero, most games do not allow this, and Fortnite is one of them. Then there is DSCP settings, which I believe is like a priority or QoS, which seems clear as mud when there is also a priority class right under. I assure you, they are different. And then finally, we have a cleaner for your storage. Nothing super crazy to explain here, though I'm sure you guys would love for me to tell you about this in great depth, about what clearing your... I'd I don't need to tell you. And then we have a dbloat tool to add or remove the pre-installed bloat from Windows installations. And lastly, in the free tier of Vitrol here, we have the ability to adjust startup applications. Post-optimization, the PC fans kicked in really soft, like, like it was trying to set the mood. Like, it was content almost. Once Careless Whisper randomly popped up on my browser and started playing, I just, I closed the tab and walked away. It, it made me very uncomfortable. I'll, I'll probably purge this Windows installation after the video. Once the PC settled down, I took it into Fortnite to try. As always, we make sure to put on our stompers before finding a very, very unfortunate soul to pair up against me. The jobless, friendless individual that has way too much time on their hands. And it went as expected too, just, just look at this.
I even had time for a mid-fight dance. While I have you here, let's talk about today's sponsor. Excellent. And just like that, we moved on to the next individual. There's a kind of joy only achievable by ruining a casual player's day. <clears throat> that's that's enough of that. Once I was done eagle boosting, I took Fortnite into my actual benchmark scenario to gather a before and after. But before we get into that, let's talk about system latency. These stats can also be found on my website, corvi.tech. Just search for virtual free and click into it. When using the Windows Performance Toolkit and captured five minutes post boot, we saw a 20% reduction in the NVIDIA driver, a 6.3 reduction of average latency on the DirectX kernel, and lastly, an 86% reduction on the system kernel. When looking at Fortnite now, I did run into some issues in regards to getting higher frames. I just could not improve the before stat. I redid the test multiple times actually to ensure it wasn't just a bug test, and out of four times, only one of them beat out the before stat. So I did try to fix it, and the first thing that I tried did improve the before stat, which was turning on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. And after making that change, I was able to consistently beat out the before stat. So my recommendation to Vitrol, since they will very likely see this, is don't have disabling hags be an option for everyone. Slap an advanced tag on that, because I know for some off does work better, but for those like me, for example, having it turned on was the better option. And I just don't want you guys to be blamed if someone blindly applies all of these settings, which let's be honest, we all do. I did it for testing and just, you know, change, change the tag. And while I was able to improve the benchmarks emotionally, I am still unchanged. If you do want to give this a link, wait, if you do want to give this a try, I'll <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description. Or if you are interested in their premium version, having me benchmark that, just drop a few comments down below. Let me know that you guys are interested in it. I believe that they have four times the tweaks and along with a lot of other things that seem to be geared towards network optimization. With that, I'll end it here. Love you guys. Let me know your thoughts and personal experiences with Vitrol down below and I'll see you in the next one.